okay, this is a screencast for a distillation problem. We have a distillation with a partial condenser and a total reboiler. So let's draw this. This is a little bit different from our standard configuration. We have a feed going in and it goes up to this partial condenser now. So now the liquid from the partial condenser is going to go down whereas the distillate will go up. So the distillate is now going to be YD because instead of having a total condenser like we've had in the past, this time it's a partial condenser. So it acts as an equilibrium contact and it separates the vapor and the liquid and they will have two different compositions. The distillate and the liquid streams will have different compositions and the distillate will now be a vapor, not a liquid like it is in many of the problems that we've done up until now. And we take the bottoms and we take it to a total reboiler and so this total reboiler will then go off and go back up into the column so we'll have V bar going back up into the column and we'll have our bottoms and our bottoms are now also a, a vapor. So the bottoms are going to be YB because this reboiler is no longer an equilibrium contact like it is whenever it's a partial reboiler. Now it's a total reboiler. And so both the bottoms and the vapor stream are going to be vapor. Everything is boiled back up. There's no separation here we only have a phase change. There's no change in the mole fractions. So our feed is coming in. Our feed is 0 0.6 acetone, so Z equals 0 0.6. The feed is 200 kilomole per hour, and it's superheated vapor. It's very important. And our YD, YD equals 0 0.9 and YB equals 0 0.05. We also know that L over D equals 3, and CMO is valid. So let's start with part A. What is the equation for the feed line? I like to start with my standard diagram, where my feed is going into the feed stage, and V bar is going into the stage, and V is going out, and the liquid is going in, and L bar is going out. Now the feed consists of a vapor portion in general and a liquid portion in general. For our problem, because it's superheated vapor, the whole thing is vapor. And so VF equals F. And LF, there's no liquid portion, so LF equals zero. Let's do balances for both the liquid and the vapor. Let's do the vapor first. So the vapor coming off of the feed stage equals the vapor going in, V bar, plus VF, plus some portion of liquid that condenses in order to cool down our superheated vapor. So our liquid stream comes into contact with this superheated vapor, and part of the liquid becomes vapor, part of it is vaporized. So one-fifth F. One mole of liquid for every five moles of feed. It's given in the problem statement. So if we go back to our V mass balance, we've got V equals V bar plus VF plus one-fifth F. Now let's do the liquid balance. L bar equals L plus LF and here LF equals zero, and it's minus one-fifth of the feed. This is because part of this liquid stream coming down into the feed is vaporized because the, the feed is superheated vapor. So L bar minus L equals negative one-fifth F. Q equals L bar minus L over F so it equals minus one-fifth F over F equals negative one-fifth. So our feed line 
is y equals q over q minus 1, x minus z over q minus 1. y equals minus 1 fifth over minus 1 fifth minus 1, x minus z. z is stated in the problem as 0 0.6 over minus 1 fifth minus 1. So y equals 1 sixth x plus 1 half. And that is our feed line. If we want to plot some portions of the feed line, we know that we can always plot z, z. You can always plot that for the feed line. And here that is 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And we can also plot the point 0 and 0 0.5, if we sub in 0 for x. So that is it for the feed line. But let, now let's move on to part b. Number from the top down, how many equilibrium stages are required for the separation? What are the total number of equilibrium contacts required? Now the difference between these two is that equilibrium contacts include all the equilibrium stages plus a partial reboiler or a partial condenser. So equilibrium contacts equal the equilibrium stages plus any partial condensers, condensers or reboilers. If you have a total condenser or a total reboiler, this does not count as an equilibrium contact because it does not change the composition of any of the streams. All it does is change the phase of the streams. If you have a partial condenser or a partial reboiler, this does count as an equilibrium contact because you will be outputting a liquid and a vapor stream that each have different compositions. So it acts as a stage, but it's different than a stage because the equilibrium stages are all part of the column that's physically different than a furnace or a condenser, which will be a separate part from the column. They'll have different efficiencies and they won't be housed as part of the column. So let's start this by starting as we always do with our top operating line. Top operating line. And how about I derive this equation just to show you where they end up getting it from the book. We have the stuff going in we have V going in equals D plus L coming out. So V equals D plus L. Now our top operating line species mass balance is going to be different than the one that you normally see. It's going to be VY equals LX plus DYD, not XD. So if we rearrange this, we get y equals L over V, X plus D over V, Y, D, and our L, V equals L over L plus D, that equals L over D over L over D plus D over D, and that equals R over R plus 1. Remember that R equals the reflux ratio equals L over D. Now D over V equals D over L plus D equals D over D over L over D plus D over D. That equals 1 over R plus 1. So our top operating line ends up being R or Y equals R over R plus 1 X, that's the same as usual, plus yd over r plus 1. Now we're given in the problem statement that r equals 3, so y equals 3 over 3 plus 1 x plus yd is given as 0 0.9 over 3 plus 1 and y equals 0 0.75 x plus 0 0.225. And we will plot the points 0 and 0 0.225 and then the other point is yd, yd, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.9.
And why can't we plot this second point? Let's plug it into our equation. When x equals yd, the value of yd, we have y equals to r over r plus 1 yd plus yd over r plus 1. So y equals r plus 1 yd over r plus 1 y equals yd. So when you're at physically on your chart at the point x equals yd, y, the y value is going to also be yd. And so we have 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So let's point plot this. We've got 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and we've got 0 and 0 0.225. And let's just draw this line. Now we're going to plot the feed line. The feed line, we got that previously in part A, and we said that we could plot 0 and 0 0.5, 0 and 0 0.5, and 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. 0 0.6, 0 0.6 is just the feed composition, and then 0 and 0 0.5. And let's plot this, and let's check this slope. For a superheated vapor, our slope should be less than 1, but positive, and that is exactly what we have. Now finally, our bottom operating line. Operating line goes through YB, YB, and the intersection of the top and the feed lines. And it's YB instead of XB because we have a total reboiler, so everything coming out of this reboiler is vapor. Okay, so YB, YB is 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. So we will plot that here, 0 0.05 and the intersection. Now all we have left to do is step off our stages and we'll start at the top and we'll go across this is supposed to be a straight line. We say on the top operating line, we go across, and we're still on the top operating line, and we go across, and look, we have moved past where the feed and the top and bottom operating lines all intersect, and so now it is time to move to the bottom operating line. And we'll go across one more time, and we get an exact number. Now, how do we number these feed stages? We're going to start at the top, and it says that we have a partial condenser, so that acts as an equilibrium contact. So we have PC at the top. Now at the very bottom, we would often put our, our partial reboiler, so PR here, but we don't have a partial reboiler this time. We have a total reboiler, so it does not act as an equilibrium contact. So we can just step off our stages to the very bottom one. We have our partial condenser first, then our stage one, then number two, then our third stage. And what is the optimal feed location? It's stage two. So let's go back to this. What are the number of stages? The stages, three. The contacts, the equilibrium contacts, we have four. Three stages partial condenser. Let's, now we just move on to part D. Calculate L bar and V bar in the bottom half of the column. Let's do a mass balance for this. We know that we have our feed coming in and we've got our distillate and our bottoms coming out. Feed equals the bottoms plus the distillate. And the feed times C equals the distillate times YD plus the bottoms times YB. So if we combine these two, we have 200 kilomole hour times 0 0.6 equals the distillate times 0 0.9 plus 200 minus the distillate times 0 0.05. This will give us a distillate of 129.4 kilomole hour and a bottoms of 70.6. All of these flow rates are going to be in kilomole hours. Now to find the liquid 
flow rate in the top half of the column, we have the liquid times the reflux ratio, L over D times D, that equals 3 times 129.4, and that equals 388.2 equals L. L bar, we found, equals L minus 1 fifth F. We found that in part A when we did a balance on the feed stage. So that equals 388.2 minus 1 fifth of 200, and that equals 348.2 equals L bar. Now let's do a balance on the bottom portion of the column. Here we have L bar going out to our, our total reboiler, and let's see, that's L bar, and then V bar coming out and B coming out. So L bar equals V bar plus B. So that means that 348.2 equals V bar plus 70.6 and V bar equals 277.6. We have a couple different ways that we can check. We can check number one and that's V equals L plus D. This is just a mass balance over the top of the column. That equals 388.2 plus 129.4. So V equals 517.6. Now when, in part A, we did a, a balance on the vapor coming off of the feed stage and found that V equals F plus V bar plus 1 fifth F. So let's just show this because VF equals F. The entire feed is vapor. So we have 517.6, just plugging everything in, equals 200, plus V bar plus 1 fifth of 200, and V bar equals 277.6, and that checks. So check number two, we'll use the graph. From the plot, L bar over V bar equals 0 0.58 minus 0 0.05 over 0 0.475 minus 0 0.05. So L bar over V bar equals 1.25. Let me show you this 0.58. We'll be about here, 0.58, and about here, 4.75. And then this point is, of course, 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. So that is the slope of the bottom operating line. And if L bar equals 348.2, then V bar equals 348.2 over 1.25, and that equals 278.6. And that is close enough if we take into account um, any error introduced by just reading off of the plot. And so we have our L bar and V bar, and we have checked them out, and they look great.